Jesus Christ, the United Nations, was created to become the housing for the Illuminati Great Conspiracy. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Living the God Life, and today I'm going to teach you how to be a journalist 101. Enjoy. <laughs> Silicon Valley is not breaking apart, my friends. It's already broken and has been for decades on end now. Only recently are we just now choosing to discover this, especially through the treasonous felonies. Of one Jerry, I'm gonna go shit in my super toilet bowl, Brown, who so happened to turn his beloved California into an actual super toilet bowl. And how ironic is that, since all his democratic gubernatorial predecessors have attempted the same exact thing for over a century on an absolute bare minimum. I really, really, really have to just, you know, I really hate to break it to you, but do you know what the National Broadcasting Corporation are? Do you know what NBC are? Do you know what they are? They are a bunch of nutless, broke chumps. Which is what I will refer to them as from now on. They call NBC a peacock for a very specific reason. And I'm going to spell it out for you. And no, it's not S-W-A-F-T, SWAFT. No, that's Enzo Moray's line. Colin Cassidy's too. They call NBC a peacock because they pee out of their mouths and talk out of their cock. And from that day forward, they realized that everything that they were saying was just all a part of Adam Weishaupt's long-running show, Fuckers Hour, also known by the more common phrase of Our Democracy! <laughs> ABC. What can we say about ABC? The American Broadcasting Company, also known as Alcoholic Butt Cracks, the illegitimate father of the Clinton Necrophilia Network, or the Corporate News Network, or the Cavendish News Network, only a thousand times less sober and a million times dumber. If you want your mind to commit seppuku, watch anything on that channel other than Steve Harvey's Family Feud. Because believe you me, when Steve Harvey steps down from his position as host of Family Feud, 
the death of the American Broadcasting Company, or as we'll refer to them as from now on, Alcoholic Foot Crocs. The death of ABC will be complete. And it'll be so bad that not even Donald Trump himself will be able to save it. And he won't either, because ABC is fake. 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 News. Black lives don't matter if black folks don't respect black lives. That's from the mouth of the black preacher. He will get pushed back from the black community, but the truth is the truth. And whilst the truth has set him free, and it set me free, and it set 63 million Americans free, it also comes from God. The same God who, by the way, created us from next to nothing. From next to nothing. So let me repeat it again. The black preacher said at the Aretha homecoming, or as they call it, the Aretha homegoing, because they don't know if they're coming or going, obviously. But the black preacher said, in plain English, black lives do not matter if black folks choose not to respect black lives. Do I need to put it any simpler for you? Do I really need to make it any easier for you to understand? If you respect your own ethnicity and those within your own ethnicity, you won't have black-on-black -black crime. You won't have black people killing other black people for no reason. You won't have black kids being molested by their black parents. And most importantly, you won't have black-on-black -black crime of any kind, at least in the frequency of which it's going on currently and has been for quite some time. So, a friendly reminder from the black preacher who gave the sermon at the Aretha funeral. Black lives don't matter if black folks cannot respect black lives. Hey, Nike! The guy you just signed to represent your 30th anniversary Just Do It campaign doesn't have a job in the NFL anymore. Not because there was collusion amongst the owners to keep him out, but rather simply because he wasn't good enough and never would have been good enough anyway, even on his best day, regardless of how much he tried. Factually speaking, he was offered the backup quarterback position on two separate teams, of which he both declined. And furthermore, to add insult to injury, his protesting racial injustices by law enforcement by kneeling during the country's national anthem presents just one problem. These injustices simply don't exist. 
We're not saying that we're the police. We're saying this because the raw data says so. There are roughly 990,000 police officers in the United States who annually have approximately 64 million interactions with the public. In 2015, many of those interactions did not involve black males. But out of those 64 million interactions, police officers shot 233 black males, of which only 16 were determined to be unarmed. And that doesn't mean that those 16 weren't resisting or violently fighting with police, like in the case of Mike Brown, only just that they possessed no weapon whatsoever other than their hands and feet. So, 16 instances out of 64 million interactions resulted in an unarmed, but not necessarily cooperative, black male being shot by police, which equates to a percentage of around point zero 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 two five percent. Let that sink in. Also in 2015, a police officer was 18 and a half times more likely to be shot by a black male than a black male was likely to be shot by a police Officer! Look at that! Colin Kaepernick is a sham. And his reason for protesting isn't based upon facts, but rather his own personal disdain for police. After all, this is the dumbass the knucklehead, the fool, who wore socks to his NFL practices, depicting police as pigs. Your new catchphrase, featuring Kaepernick, is believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. <laughs> What a joke! The men and women of law enforcement on this country's military believe in the careers of public service and sadly, many do sacrifice everything which roughly translates to their lives. Rest assured that we will never purchase another one of your products of any kind, regardless of what you're selling, ever again. And now let's pay tribute to our latest corporation who went full retard, Nike. In dishonor of Mikey. N-I-K-E. 1988 to 2018. They just don't do it anymore. Rest in pieces, you pieces of jihad crop. You sold out to copper dick. And look at what you did to your product. Not worth it to go bankrupt and out of business by supporting an entitled athlete whose parents raised him on Monomonomics! Nike! Obamanomics! Imagine that! His parents raised him on Obamanomics! 
and you picked this guy to be your cover boy. And besides, your products were made by children working in sweatshops in third world nations, working 80 hours a week on 20 cents an hour, and none of the proceeds you generate ever go to them anyway. Plus, they cost too much! <laughs> Nike is a global corporation. They have no allegiance to America, which makes their impending bankruptcy that much funnier and worthy of a Hollywood-sized comedy or irony. Now, doesn't it? People like myself are against kneeling while the national anthem is being played. I'm pointing out that there are many people in corporations that have no allegiance to America. They claim that they're citizens of the world. And that's why they believe in open borders and simply disrespect and refuse to acknowledge any of the American values. And that's the problem with corporations who try to mockingly play the role of God of God! Knowing all too well and good that God with you, can play his role better than every single one of those oculism Illuminati puppets put together, combined, and immersed in a cold, dark vacuum, even on their best day. They too are merely in the pocket of the Committee of 300 who, by the way, operate solely and entirely on the goal of completely erasing all life on Earth. And to those of you who probably haven't wakened up yet, you're probably asking me that one question in particular. This is a conspiracy theory, isn't it? It sounds like a conspiracy theory, does it not? Well, it is. But when you connect the dots long enough, the conspiracy theory becomes perfectly legitimate in every way conceivable and thus serves as a very real nightmare that would best sum up the events that were mentioned by those who wrote the Bible. Naming three offhand, for instance, St. John the Baptist and his three books of Revelation, two of which are not included in the actual King James Bible. Moses and his Sermon on the Mount, his Ark, that Noah built. The accounts of Ecclesiastes, as well as those who warn of such modern realities in decades and even centuries past, three more examples of which are coming your way. Martin Luther King Jr., Nostradamus, first name Mikhail. He had a son named Cesar, if I'm not mistaken. And George Orwell, whose real identity was Eric Arthur Blair. And when you listen to their teachings, as they were taught likewise by God, the answer remains unchanged and completely the same. Rothschild and Dynasty in forcing thoughts of the Agenda 21 global narrative, and dare I say it, the entirety of it as a whole.
Nike is merely in the smallest trenches of Rothschild's pockets and the dynasty of Rothschild have countless agencies and evils under their wing including the FBI, including the DOJ, including the CIA, including democracy, including the Federal Reserve, including Monsanto, Quick reminder, this including all hate groups in general, including terrorism, including the entirety of the educational system, known as including pretty much all money in general, except for the money that they haven't tainted yet. And there's Those not a lot of money in which they haven't tainted it yet. For by and when they taint that, it was all the sea will be more complete. Turn the freaking channel. The list goes on. And all of those that have just cited for you all operate under the same name and banner. Illuminati of Bavaria. So, as you have just now heard, this is a conspiracy theory, but also one that's becoming a reality, and also one which was prophesied as far backward as dozens of centuries before. At the core of liberalism is the spoiled child, miserable as all spoiled children are, unsatisfied, demanding, ill-disciplined, despotic, and useless. Liberalism at its core and as a general collective whole is a philosophy of sniveling, snake-bitten, gullible, retarded brats who vote for Democrats that abuse the Constitution in exchange for prostitution. Because sometimes, and more often than not, the best and brightest will have to admit that the people with the worst past end up creating the best future. And the people with the best past usually end up creating the worst future. And believe you me, when push comes Thanks. to play her, everything is going to reveal itself in due time. And we all will be witness to it. Charles Barkley said, We, as black people, are never going to be successful. Not because of white people, but because of other black people. It is a dirty, dark secret. You know, when there are young black kids doing well in school, the loser kids usually tell them, Oh, you're acting white. For some reason, we are brainwashed to think that if you're not a thug or a retarded democratic idiot, then you're not black enough. Ronald Reagan said, We must reject the idea that every time a law is broken, whenever it is broken, 
we must reject the fact that society is guilty rather than the lawbreaker. It is time to restore the American passage that each individual, each solitary single individual is responsible for his or her own actions. It is also noted, according to a certain Instagram post, or is it Pinterest? I can't tell the difference anymore. But according to a Pinterest post submitted by a Pinterest user named C. Moniz, I will not apologize for being straight. I will not apologize for being Christian. I will not apologize for being white. I will not apologize for supporting gun rights. I personally do not attack anyone else's beliefs. I don't discriminate. I don't make hurtful comments. But I am sick and tired of being made to look like a bad person because of the above. That is what C. Moniz said in that particular Pinterest post. And it simply cannot be more true than it is now. You people need to wake the fuck up. It is a vastly important fact. 4% of all Americans are millionaires. 51% of all the politicians in our Congress are millionaires. You must remember this when a so-called representative or senator of the people or a politician in general talks about the phrase income equality which kind of harkens to what James Earl Jones said according to an interest post the world is filled with violence because criminals carry guns we decent law-abiding citizens of our nation should also have guns. Otherwise, the criminals will win and the decent law-abiding citizens and people will lose. Which also harkens to something that was also posted on Pinterest just a moment before. Around the same time. The same Rothschild Oculus Illuminati puppets and people, if you could even call them that, who sat idly by as Donald John Trump's predecessor Barry Sotoro, a.k.a. Barack Obama II, bombed seven nations, killed American citizens without any due process whatsoever, without anything more than a simple trial, legalized mass surveillance, and racked up over ten trillion dollars in debt nationally are now more worried that Donald John Trump, the current President of the United States, will abuse his power? Are you fucking kidding me? To the people who served in Obama's administration,
What the hell is the matter with you people? You don't deserve to be called people. You served under an illegal immigrant in chief. And you did nothing to stand up to him while he bombed seven nations and killed many of us without any due process. When you could have just stood up to him and impeached him and his entire two-term presidency. Yeah, that's right. He served two terms in Congress. His two-term presidency was legit because of the simple fact that he immigrated to this country from Kenya illegally. Through absolutely no port of entry whatsoever. Good job, people who sat by while your president fucked us high and dry. Yeah, good job, people. As a matter of fact, you don't deserve to be called people. You know what you are? You're a bunch of bird-brained farm animals. That's what you are. Thank you, Scully. And that's how you become a journalist, ladies and gentlemen. This episode of Living the God Life has been sponsored to you by... Ah!